Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus. You are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my special guest. We are back with another edition of the Top Producer Series from Movement Mortgage. She is going to have her best year ever this year, funding over $50 million in personal production. Her branch will produce well over $140 million in branch production. She is the one, the only, Julia Bell. Julia, welcome to the Loan Officer Podcast. Why, thank you for having me, Dustin. Yeah, no, thank you so much for um, taking some time out of your super busy schedule and sliding in here and letting us dive deep into who is Julia Bell, what drives Julia Bell, and how, how did you achieve, not just, okay, yes, you're having a career year, but the consistency. Like, I've known you for the past decade, and this isn't an anomaly that Julia Bell with Movement Mortgage is doing um, production that'll put her in the top 1% of all loan originators, right? This is a year in, year out. What is it that motivates you? Like, what drives you to be the successful boss lady that you are? I wake up every single morning, and I want to be the best version of me. And by doing that, I look in the mirror and I motivate myself to be the best version of me. Have you always been that way? Ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> wow. Now, let me ask you a question, because um, I know this about you. You are second generation mortgage banker. Yes. Right. Your mom in the central Florida market was a who's who herself for decades until she retired, bought all her property, and now she's like totally living the dream retirement life. Did you know growing up that you wanted to be in the mortgage industry? No. <clears throat> in fact, I wanted to steer very clear of the mortgage industry. Uh, I always said to my mom, Mom, you talk to your realtors more than you talk to me. And now I have become a version of her. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to be a news broadcaster. You have a voice for TV and radio. Well, thank you. Yeah, so do I, you. Well, <laughs> not really, but I just uh, put on a show and forced people to watch it. But uh, thank you. Um, did you ever get an opportunity to work in that, that industry? Because you went to school, right? You went to UCF mm -hmm. for uh, news, journalism, broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever get a chance to actually work in it? Or did you dive straight into the mortgage banking industry and get sucked in? I got right into the mortgage industry. I was just going to come help my mom short term. And I said, I'll do it for a little while until you find someone else to fill the gap. And as I got into it, I started loving the idea of getting people into home ownership. Is, is that what still drives you today? Absolutely. Without Not the doubt. money. Not the money. Not the money. No. When you have a passion and a love for something, the money comes. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, I look back on my early career and I tell people often, like, I wish teaching and coaching at the high school level paid more mm -hmm. because I think that's something I'd be extremely passionate about. Similar to how I'm passionate about our industry, it just doesn't pay enough. And I had just enough money motivation mm -hmm. that I found that I could still be a bit of a coach and a teacher and a problem solver, but also go into an industry that, that has um, no cap in terms of income. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm always curious into like what drives people, what motivates people, you, know, you mentioned, well, every day you wake up and you just try to be the best version of yourself. Was that something that was instilled in you from an early childhood? You said that you were that way as long as you can remember. But was that instilled like in your household? Oh, absolutely. Both of my parents were very successful. And so I would see what they were doing and I knew I wanted to be like them or better. Okay. Um, I'm assuming your children are probably very similar to that then? Very much so. Yeah. Driven, focused. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's walk, walk through this. I want to do top three, top three things that you have done in your career to get you to where you are. It doesn't necessarily have to be blocking and tackling. It could be right. Blocking and tackling to me is when I first got into the industry and this is me, Dustin Owen, I did the 12 week challenge. That's a Todd Duncan thing, which I believe you are a fan of Todd Duncan. And I do want to jump into that. But Todd Duncan, this is probably back in 2003, 2004, taught somewhere, somehow the 12-week challenge, which is you call 12 potential referral sources a day for 12 weeks to schedule 60 appointments. 
and you'll end up building a network of referral sources. So like that's a blocking and tackling that I would share with anybody. But then other things is mindset. You know, mindset was I made sure that I didn't leave the office until I had one referral that day. Whatever it took, text messages, phone calls, emails. I did that every day until I got one referral. And if that was at 10 a.m., yeah, you might have found me at the poker room at noon. You might have found me at the golf course at 2 o'clock because I came in and did, did what I had to do. But when I ask you, I'm curious, what are three things, if you were to go back and talk to the younger version of yourself, younger in your career, what are three things that person must do to be successful, to be a one percenter? And it doesn't necessarily have to correlate to the mortgage banking industry, but just the business in general. Mm -hmm. The first thing I would do is I would find somebody that I want to emulate and I would see their successes and do exactly what they do that made them successful. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. It's already been invented for us. It's just a matter of implementing it. So that would be the first thing. Okay. The second thing I would do is I would put systems in place to make sure that we can successfully accomplish our goals on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. And I would have a business plan written down. That would be the third. So I love those three answers because they correlate to just about any business. Mm -hmm. And that's something we talk about a lot. Although the name of the show is the Loan Officer Podcast, the name of the show is the Loan Officer Podcast because I believe every person needs a good loan officer in their back pocket. Yes. Right? It's not necessarily that we're doing a show specifically for loan officers. And your advice, it, it, it resonates throughout all industries. What I loved about what you said in terms of find someone to emulate, right? That's any book you read as it pertains to leadership or as it pertains to creating good habits. It talks about running in a circle, running in a crowd of people that, that make you better. That, so that, like, I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, I, I just read that in one of my books. But then you mentioned don't reinvent the wheel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't reinvent the wheel. Also, when it pertains to, you mentioned, have systems put in place. Mm -hmm. Did you develop your own systems? Like, did you craft them and get super unique and reinvent the wheel? Or did you look at what other people were doing and emulate them? I looked at what other people were doing and I emulated it. Yeah. Life's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. If you just find someone who is doing it well, someone that you respect how they're doing it and ask them, hey, how does that work? Right? I mean, it's swipe oh, yeah. and adapt. Yeah. Swipe and adapt. Imitate um, in order to, to propel and then maybe even make it your own. Put your own little spin on it. So how about this one? So we talked about three things that you would uh, tell yourself, hey, make sure you do this. No one I've ever met has become successful without out failing the rest. My guess is you have probably failed more than most people you know. And you failed more because you've tried more and you've tried harder. So with the extra effort definitely comes extra failure. So what are three things that you would tell, um, let's say the future Julia Bell, right? Let's say the mini you, that 17 year old high school senior, right? That junior in college, that 25 year old who is looking for a career change and thinks that she wants to go into something that is financial sales related. What are three pitfalls that you're like, listen, girlfriend, like if you can stay away from X. I would say don't hit the streets until you know guidelines like the back of your hand. Ooh, okay. Because you have to be knowledgeable. So you know, know your product. Absolutely. Know your product. And, and, and be prideful and know exactly what programs are going to be best for your clients and for your realtor partners to know about. And the worst thing you can do is go somewhere and not know something and tell them something that isn't exactly what it should be and then you lose credibility. So you have to be knowledgeable. That would be the first and foremost. Second thing would be to make sure you hire the right people on your team. The worst thing to do is to hire somebody that doesn't fit that role. It's does, it does them a horrible disservice and it's not a good thing for, for your business and your model either. So that would be the second thing is to make sure you have a good hire. Um, and, and good for them because they, you want to put people in the right place at the right time. So it has to be a good fit. And then the third thing would be be intentional 
be intentional about what you do on a daily basis and make sure that, that you don't reinvent that wheel <laughs> and put systems in place so that you have a solid foundation. Were those some of the pitfalls that you had? Like I'm assuming you've had some oh, yeah. bad hires or mm -hmm. you may have gotten up, gone to work, but you did so in a non-intentional or unintentional manner. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't really have... Um, you know, some people call it a North Star. You didn't have something that was necessarily guiding you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my mind just went blank. Know your products. Know your products. Know Knowledge. your products. Okay. Woo, man, there's some dead <laughs> air there. For two salespeople, let me just tell you, like silence to us, it's, it's like the uh, nails on a chalkboard. Oh, it's scary. Yeah, yeah, silence is very scary. That's probably the first time that my brain just went flatline on me. Uh -huh. Okay, product knowledge. Yes. This is going to be industry specific. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, mm -hmm. how would you recommend someone who's new in their career obtain that product knowledge? I would literally go to the Fannie Mae website, the Freddie Mac website, FHA website, and I would pull the guidelines. And every single week, I would learn one program start to finish. And when I have new loan officers on my team, I do a little coaching session with them. And I will tell them, take Fannie Mae home. I want you to learn the 3% down conventional loan to this week. Okay. And on Friday, we're going to have a little quiz on it. And it has done wonders for their product knowledge and, and for mine, because then I learn a little something new all the time as well. Yeah. And I ask that because we are um, huge proponents of Xenix. Mm -hmm. um, and I, X-I-N, N-I-X, mm -hmm. uh, Casey Cunningham up in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have utilized Xenix's um, training programs, but they cost money, mm -hmm. right? So you, you need a little bit of money to invest in yourself. Or the Mortgage Bankers Association, especially if you're working for a lender who is a member, they have phenomenal trainings through MBA, so MBA.org, and they're free if you're a member. And then, you know, there's there's Todd Duncan's of the world and the core of the world, and they don't teach you necessarily programs, products, and guidelines. That's more of LO coaching. Mm -hmm. But um, I was just more curious what you recommend because – you have seven loan officers, right? So mm -hmm. those seven LOs look up to you as their mentor, as their coach, as as their leader. And I was curious what, what you advise them to do. And you tell them to grab one program, one product a week, mm -hmm. learn it. Yep. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love that. So my guess would be if I were to ask you what's the one thing that you did or you do in your marketplace that puts you above the rest, one of them is – when you pick up the phone and call me and ask me a question, I know that answer as if I'm an underwriter. Would that be a fair assessment? Absolutely. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. What's something else you've done in your career that you're like, yeah, because I did X, I was able to get to where I am today? Because I did what my mom told me to do. Oh, listen to mom. How about this? Um, listen to mom. Hey, kids out there, listen to your parents. They're not all boomers. They know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, but li you listen to your leader. You listen to, to to your mentor Yes. in the business. But what was she telling you to do back then? Well, she told me to put together a database. And at the time, I remember looking at her saying, I don't have a database. I'm in college. And she says, well, what about your alumni directory? in college? What about uploading them into a database? What about taking your high school friends and putting them into the database? It is those, just that alone has been a huge portion of my business. So early on, you started working on a database, your circle of influence. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that that's huge because we all have it, right. right? We all have a circle of influence. And this really probably partly is more to our realtor partners, even than our loan officers. But yeah, one of the books I read early, early on was Michael Mayer's Seven Levels, Seven L, Seven Levels of of um, I don't know what the it's 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 a it's a book written by a top producing realtor who basically took his business from nothing to like a million dollars in sales in a matter of like three, four, like five years, some some short period of time, mm -hmm. and he did so without purchasing leads, and he worked his COI, he worked his circle of influence. And hearing you say that, knowing you as a top producer, it's like, oh, wow, duh. But that is something that anyone and everyone can do, regardless if you are a 20-year veteran in the industry and maybe you're not achieving the, the, the sales success that, that you strive for or you're just getting started out. You learned early on, 
whether I'm 19, whether I'm 21, 31, or 41, mm-hmm. I have this network of people who already know me. Mm-hmm. They probably are willing to help me. Let me work them. Did you do anything specific to work them? Like, did you take them golfing or do happy hours? Or was it just uh, get out your old school cell phone, the little probably flip phone back then? <laughs> Couldn't really text. Mm-hmm. Didn't have email on your phone just yet. Yeah. Um, and, and like, what, what was that like? I would just pick up the phone. I'm a big believer in being on the phone all day in sales. We need to be on the phone all day long. And the more people we talk to is the more opportunities. But the first thing I did was call and let them know what I did for a living. It's amazing how that's the first step. A lot of people don't go out and tell everyone they know what they do for a living. My dentist, my doctor, my kids' doctors, they all know what I do for a living because I make sure that I tell everybody. And you wear a name badge. I do, yes. And I'm guessing... You do that purposefully. Absolutely. Every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, I mean, that's almost like the first thing I noticed this morning. Um, Julia got here before I did, <laughs> full disclosure. And um, so we're passing in like the elevator. And the very first thing I noticed is good for her. She still wears her name badge. Like I own 17 name badges. I probably can't find one right now if I went looking for it, but I know which, which glove box and which drawer they're probably sitting in. Mm -hmm. But like that is a, a, just a time tested proven way to market yourself Mm -hmm. in a very non, non threatening passive way. Um, so I, I love the fact, and you have it on the right side of your jacket. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yes. and by the way, by right side, I meant correct side. The correct side. But yes. right side is also your right side. Right. Yeah. And, yep. and, and, and the viewers should know exactly why that is. Because when you go to shake someone's hand and you lean in, you want them to be able to see your name badge. 100%. And as guys, what you'll notice on guys is the little pocket on our jacket is on the left side. Mm-hmm. So no, that's my right side. That is my, but that's, that's my left side. Yeah, that's my left side. Woo. I told you I'm having a rough morning. I think what it is, I'm on like day 62 of no alcohol. Good for you. And I think it's distorting my brain. I think, I think a couple glasses of red wine might actually bring back some, some, some brain activity. I don't know. Um, October 15th, I can have my first highlight beer. Um, but, uh, but, uh, shit, look at that. I'm already like all over the place trying to think of, um, my, my right, my, my right side. Mm-hmm. This is, this, this is my left side. Mm-hmm. So as a guy with the name badge, we mistakenly put our name badges on our pocket because mm-hmm. it fits nicely there, but it should go on the okay. other side. Yes. Yeah. So anyone listening, wherever your pocket square goes is not where your name badge goes. <laughs> that is the left side of your jacket. <laughs> Promise you it's the left. You want it on the right side. Yep. All right. What else? Like, what drives you? Like, I want to get into Julia Bell's mindset. I mean, you are killing it, right? Both in production and um, just because I understand the way that um, commissions are paid in our industry. You're killing it financially as well, having your best year on both sides, right? This will be your best income year. I'm assuming it's also going to be your best production year. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say, eh, that's enough? Or do you never say that's enough? I never say it's enough. So my goal, um, and I'm going to tell a little story. Okay. Um, Todd Duncan had done a presentation last week. And, and, and real quick, for, for those that don't know, Todd Duncan is a who's who in the mortgage industry. He got in the business back in the 80s. He was a top producer for a few years. But we know him mostly as a... Um, mortgage guru. He does coaching. He does sales. He puts on big conferences. Uh, so his teachings and his books are followed by by thousands, tens of thousands of mortgage originators and sales leaders. Um, so for those of you outside of the industry, Todd Duncan, just know him. He is a who's who and someone that we look to um, as a bit of a guiding light or a, or a mentor on how and what to do to be successful. So go ahead. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you. So this girl gets on and she's a cute blonde and she has these most beautiful little glasses and they're black rimmed and she kind of looked a little nerdy and she says, I just did $107 million worth of production year to date and this was last week and I went, I'm going to do $100 million. And you're doing $50 million this year. Correct. So yeah. I'm going to double production okay. for next year. 
And so immediately I got her glasses and I am now wearing these glasses during my work day because I do need to see yeah. the computer um, and they're cute and I look nerdy and I'm going to do a hundred million next year. That's phenomenal. And Thank that's, you. I mean, that's just something that's ingrained. Like yeah. no one taught you that you just, you saw someone else is doing it and you thought, yeah, she's why cute. Yeah, she's smart, but <laughs> but why can't I? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's she still puts on her shoes the same way I put on my shoes. She still wakes up in Absolutely. the morning. Absolutely. Yeah. And you do this while also um, being a wife, being a mom, um, dedicating your time to causes that are near and dear to your heart. Like, how? Like, people, people listening and watching. How? What's your schedule like? Do you ever get to sleep? Like, what is it like day in the life of Julia Bell? What's your, what's your week like? Are you working Saturdays and Sundays? Are you, you know, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m.? What's, what, what does your schedule look like and how are you able to do everything? And is it realistic? Is it realistic? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I think it's really important for no matter what industry you're in to time block, to, to really be intentional in time block. Um, working out is very important to me. So I make that time to do it either early in the morning or in the evening times. I cook dinner every night, um, do the laundry. I do normal things that women do. Um, and I also run a successful business. And I think it's very, very possible to do all of it if you have the right time blocking systems in yeah. place. And you'll hear me say systems a lot because you have to have them or it can all be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and, and I, I have found that people that have achieved your type of success are very deliberate, right? And everything that they do and predictable, like, you know, being deliberate is also predictable. You know, I bet at 6 a.m. the 20 people closest to you know what you're doing. At 9 a.m. Oh, they yeah. probably know what you're doing in terms of like, you know, they might not know that you are with me on the Lone Officer podcast, but they know, oh, Julie's at work because it's this time. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, oh yeah. Saturday morning, she goes to spin class. Oh, it's Sunday. She's in church. You mm -hmm. know, it's like on, on my end, you know, I get up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. You know, I exercise from 7 to 8. I am in the office at 9. By 4.30, I am leaving. You know, it's, it, yeah. um, you know, it's like it's, it's predictable. And at times I know predictable is boring, but predictable allows us to get the most done in a day so that when I have time blocked my free time, I can be unpredictable. Watch right. out, watch <laughs> out, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to hear that and to, to see that because you can make all the assumptions that you want. And, and I'm always looking for, man, does someone have a magic pill? Is someone drinking some Kool-Aid that I don't have access to? And I haven't found it yet. Like I'm even like right now as we do this interview, I'm, I'm like, gosh, there has to be something, right? There, there has to be some kind of trick, some kind of a, a, a leg up or an edge. And no, there really isn't a leg up or an edge. It's just a matter, it's a mindset. It's having the mindset that you're going to get up and do all of these things successfully. Ha it doesn't always work out as planned. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you utilized outside sources to help you with your mindset? Like coaching or therapy or counseling or? So I'm currently in the Todd Duncan um, okay. program. Just started it. Okay. What's the name of that program? And shout out to Todd Duncan because we keep on talking about it's you. It's the Mastery Program. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sales Ma Oh, and his, sales, sales, sales Mastery, mastery. is his conference. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's it's the, the performance mastery group. Okay. Um, so, and I ju literally just started it. Uh, before that, I had internal coaching through Movement Mortgage. Tim Davis? Uh, it, Tim Davis was one of them. Rob what? Jordan. Okay, I don't know Rob, <laughs> but shout out to Tim Davis. Awesome. I tell so many Tim Davis stories. Uh -huh. um, my, my favorite was Tim and I golfing. This was, God, probably a decade ago now, but he was in Orlando. And um, you, know, you know Tim, but mm -hmm. Tim's not – he's very – humble Christian guy. He like, I have a mouth of a sailor. Uh, I use all words in the English language, even make up some of my own words, right? Tim try, tries to stay away from the cuss words. So we were out golfing and we were talking shop and we we're talking um, leadership and branding and, and sales motivation. And it was Tim that said to me, and I use this all the time and I make sure I give Tim the credit for it. 
He's like, you know, Dio, by the way, Tim's from like Kentucky, mm-hmm. Nashville. So he has a bit of a Southern twang more so than I do. He's like, well, you know, Dio, I just don't get it when people are like all or nothing. Like, give me 110%, give me 110%. And then some loan officers, we don't feel like 110%. So we give 0%. He's like, I say bull crap. I was like, oh, you know, Tim's saying bull crap. I took a step back. He caught my attention. And he's like, if you're only feeling 60%, give me 60%. I'm like, wow, what a great mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, why, especially in sales or when when we own small businesses or entrepreneurs, why are we constantly either all or nothing? Why do we have to either give 110% or give zero? If your coach or your mentor or your boss is asking you to make 20 calls that day and you only get 11 done, 11's better than five, but five's better than zero. And it was Tim Davis who did that. So um, you know, you being at Movement, I know Tim now now works at Movement. Mm-hmm. So you had coaching through your employer, mm-hmm. and then it got to a point to where maybe you were looking for just another viewpoint, maybe another another voice. Mm-hmm. I call it the cool uncle, right? Like mom and dad can teach us so much, but sometimes hearing that same message from the cool uncle or the cool aunt uh, resonates a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So you're you're now with Mastery through Todd Duncan, correct? Is that because you want to do 100 million? It's because I want to do 100 million. Okay. I'm going to do 100 You're going. Million. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Coleman, who normally sits in your seat, uh-huh. when, when, when he is co hosting the show with me, he's a big proponent of put it out in the universe. Yeah. If you put it out in the universe, it will happen. Yeah. So, by the way, we're talking about Movement Mortgage, your employer. Mm-hmm. I'm putting this out in the universe. Mm-hmm. Casey Crawford, I want you on the show. Yeah. Casey, <laughs> but it has to be when you're in Orlando, which I know he at one point probably lived in Tampa because I think he was on the mm-hmm. Buccaneers football team he was. Um, yes. at, at some point in his career. Uh-huh. I don't know Casey. I want to get to know Casey. Okay. So next time Casey's in Orlando, uh-huh. I would love to have him as a guest on the Loan Officer he Podcast. Would love it. Yeah. He would love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I even attempted to dress like Casey today, but I didn't put on a T-shirt. <laughs> He's a big fan of wearing T-shirts. He absolutely With is. his jacket. Yes. And I was this close to wearing my uh, hashtag no bar were left behind that I got from okay. Sales Boomerang uh-huh. um, as, a, as a, fr- a freebie. Uh-huh. I was so close to wearing that with this jacket just so I could emulate Casey, but I'm going to put it out in the universe. Just like you're putting out in, in the universe, you're going to do 100 million. Yeah. I'll put it out in the universe. Casey, bring the kids through Disney. I'm assuming he has kids. I don't even know. Yeah, okay. Bring your kids to Disney. Mm-hmm. Check in on Julia. Congratulate her and her team on the awesome year they're having. And stop by for an hour and do a show with me. I, I like it's it. out there. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. What else? What uh, as, as we wrap this up, mm-hmm. and, and this is the top producer series, right? So everything we're, we're trying to get into is how does someone become more like you? Mm-hmm. How do we recreate or create the next Julia Bell? I mean, you're... You're a decade away from wanting to maybe start slowing down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's time to do what mama did and go buy yourself 140 acres and have some, what did you, you call them, Australian bulls you are telling me earlier? Scottish. Scottish. Scottish bulls on your property, <laughs> um, which I'm going to have to Google what a Scottish bull looks like. Those are, they're beautiful. Are they like real they're hairy? Very hairy. Okay. Lots of hair. And, and they just have them on their property. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. so stay away from that rabbit hole. But like what, what, are, what are some parting shots or advice that, that you would want to give to another, it could be a business person, doesn't have to be necessarily a loan officer, to be like, hey, you two can do it and here's how. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm a big believer that <clears throat> you have to get to know your clients on a personal level. Okay. And not just think of them as a file. I had someone tell me one time, Julia, this is a person. This is a person that's moving that needs to move into this home. They're not just a file. They're not just someone who is a teacher at a school. They're a real person and they have feelings. And I think the best way to have repeat clients is to be intentional about getting to know them and caring about who they are and what their circumstances are and follow up with them. Make sure that you stay in contact with your your past clients because they will be your biggest advocates going forward. There's that word again, intentional. Like I think the title of this shouldn't even be top producer series. It'd be like (laughs) being intentional with Julia Bell at Movement Mortgage. Yes. Um, No, I love it because it's it's that. It's everything that you do has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And and it's not this person's a number, this person's a file. No, they are a name. Mm -hmm. Um, They are a human. They have a soul. Um, And if you get to know your clients really well, you could potentially find a life partner, right. maybe a spouse out of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you know anyone who has ever 
met a client and thought, wow, he or she makes my heart flutter. I should probably get to know them even better. That's a really good question. Oh, is it? Yes, okay. I was actually doing my third mortgage for this amazing man by the name of Ken. And <clears throat> I was the preferred loan officer at Lockheed Martin at the time where he worked. And he walked in the room and it was love at first sight. And we are now life partners. That is amazing. Yeah, no, <laughs> obviously I teed that up because off camera we were talking about it. And and uh, I don't know many other originators who have actually married their uh, a client. And at least you made him do three loans with you. You're like, look, exactly. the first two loans, I wasn't t t totally sold on you. But <laughs> now that you've gotten a couple raises and you got that credit score up, maybe we should talk. No. Yeah, and, and I said, well, I can't date. A, a customer and he says, well, then you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> but oh. now I, but now I still do our mortgages. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that, that is, uh, that is fantastic. What are you going to do to celebrate the year that you're having? Do you even celebrate the years? Like, like, are you that person that you set a goal and like, well, if I achieve this goal, we're going to do X. So every time I meet a milestone <clears throat> in a year, I will buy myself, excuse me, <clears throat> one nice thing. Okay. So for two years, I would buy myself a little diamond bracelet. Okay. Last year, it was a purse. This year, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I, I always like to reward myself for my successes because I'm always giving to my family and to the church and to the kids and my husband. And so that's the one time a year at the end of the year that I will buy myself one nice thing. That's my celebration. So is it going to be an, uh, a diamond bracelet this year? It might, because I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there, there's no new Louis bag or a Kate Spade bag? You're not? No, not this year. No, you did that a couple years ago, probably. last year. Yeah. No, we're, 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 we're trip people. Like, okay. I love trips. Okay. Trips are my thing. So the Rona is definitely uh, screwing up any of my celebratory things. Um, especially like, and, and I'm going through this, um, I talk about it often on, on the show, but 75 hard is a mental, um, I call it a mental fitness challenge, but it's mm -hmm. a mental discipline challenge. And I did it last year. I'm doing it again this year. And one of the okay. disciplines is you, you give up alcohol for the 75 days that you're going through it. Mm -hmm. So normally, like if, if we were celebrating, I, I might go out and just buy a really nice bottle of whiskey. Right. Okay. But I'm like, well, I'm not drinking. So, Aww. yeah. So it's like, you know, we, we had this awesome <laughs> month and I want to go celebrate with the team. Mm -hmm. So I bought one of our top loan officers on the team a bottle of scotch. And he's like, oh, you should come over and have this with me. And I'm like, uh, no, unfortunately not. Oh, we should maybe go do a trip together. I'm like, oh, kind of, you know, not not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important that people celebrate. Like, I think it's important that you just don't work, work, work to get the trophy, get the, the paycheck, I think there needs to be more behind it. I think it makes it easier to be intentional when you have more things to be intentional about. Sure. Like I would guess tithing to your church mm -hmm. is a motivator, but do you have other outside causes that are near and dear to you that, that also help you stay intentional? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a son who's autistic Okay. and he's 13. And years and years ago, probably when he was about one, I decided to get involved with Autism Speaks, and it's very near and dear to my heart. So I'm, I'm very, uh, every year we do the walk, we raise money, um, and I, I like to give back in that way. Um, I also like to give to the homeless, so I'm big on giving to the homeless people. Um, Mission, there's a harvest food bank. Yeah, the Second Harvest the Food second Bank. Harvest okay, food bank, yep, locally bank. here in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And anytime I have a really good month, I give more than I would normally give on a month to the different entities, to the church, Action Church, to uh, the Harvest Food Bank, to Autism Speaks. I'm a big believer that the more you give, the more you receive. And I know that sounds silly, but it's the truth. It is absolutely 100% the truth, the more you give. And, and that's not just monetarily. That's emotionally, physically, and all of the above. Yeah, it's it's your time and your money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm um in in most good coaching systems like the core was the first one to introduce me to it, mm -hmm. and and the core teaches and we talk about this on our episodes when we get into budgeting and personal finance. But you should really save twenty percent of what you make, mm -hmm. right? And then you should tithe ten percent of what you make. And look, if you're a a a religious person, non-religious, okay, tithing to me 
ties into religion, but you can still tithe to your community, right? You can still find those um, community centers and those nonprofits mm -hmm. that you can still give 10% of your pay. So then if you think about it, if you're really wanting to be badass in business, you have 20% of what you earn being saved. You have 10% going back to the less fortunate and you should be investing 10% into yourself. Without a doubt. Yeah. At least 10%. Yeah. At, mm -hmm. at least. And, and how do you do so? Well, by attending Sales Mastery by Todd Duncan, by doing coaching programs, whether it's, um, you know, with with the, the Duncan system or with Zenix or with the core or with mortgage marketing animals or any other one of those, uh, you know, 90 day sales manager, like there's so many good opportunities for you to better yourself from both an educational standpoint, as well as a leadership standpoint. Um, then after uncle Sam takes, hopefully, I'm gonna say, hopefully, hopefully 32% of your income, because you're making that much, then what you're left with, enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. Right. Go on trips, yes. go to Vail, mm -hmm. take your parents somewhere that they've always wanted to, to, to go, but maybe they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. But because of your drive and your motivation and always being intentional with what you're doing, you, you, you can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Last two words of advice. What would you want to leave your legacy, right? Written on your, not, not necessarily on your headstone, but if, if, if you could, if you could make a recording of your voice, and actually you can do this because you have an iPhone, um, but, and it's going to last and it's going to last a century and it's only going to be played for future sales leaders. What would you want that recording to say? I would say lead a life with purpose, be prideful, always have dignity, um, reputation is everything. Uh, do the right thing. Don't chase the money. The money comes when you do all of the right things. So that was a lot in a nutshell, but that was very no, but, powerful. But that is something someone could hit play on <laughs> uh -huh. every single morning as they were making their coffee. And it's a great reminder. Mm -hmm. Julie, if people want to get a hold of you, yes, how would they best do so? On my cell phone. Okay. What's that number? It's 321 Three zero three one seven three seven. Three two one three zero three one seven, seven three. three seven. You got it. She's Julia Bell with Movement Mortgage. I'm the DO with the Loan Officer Podcast. This is all the time we have today. But if you want to get to know Julia more, hit her up. I'm sure you can Google Julia Bell and Movement Mortgage, and she'll pop up 17 different places. She gave you her phone number. If you have suggestions for us in the show, please find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, or you can email me, doen at waterstonemortgage.com. That's all we have. Thank you for tuning in. Deuces. Deuces.